Today, this morning, we're going to make a uh, Vietnamese vegetable pancake. Um, that I think is a really cool dish, and it's a savory pancake, which isn't very common. We're used to drowning it in butter and maple syrup, which is just as good and hits the spot. Uh, but we're going to try a different take on it this morning. Um, so I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to make that um, based on the recipe that I've learned. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is we're going to uh, come over to the cutting board, and I'm going to talk about some of our ingredients so we know what we're working with. Um, so here I have, I have three things that I want to go over. Um, so first we have our shiitake mushrooms, um, our shiitake mushroom caps, and then we have our snow peas, and then we have our uh, batter that I'll bring over in just a second to show you the consistency. Um, one thing I do want to talk about with shiitake mushrooms are, are one of my favorite mushrooms. So they are, they have a very uh, almost meaty flavor, very umami, um, and they are a, a slight nuttiness to them. And so we're only using the top of the mushroom. We're not using the stem, which comes in uh, something that looks about this big. And we take the stem off and then we cut it into the size that we want to use it. Um, technically, or typically we want um, bite-sized pieces because we don't want a really big cap um, to come into our mouth. We want to be able to eat it. And what I want to point out here, so this was sauteed ahead of time. Um, what I do want to point out with mushrooms, I think mushrooms are easily um, screwed up in the sense of we don't, we don't always cook them perfectly. And so here with these mushrooms, you can see uh, the golden brown coloring on the side. So we wanna go high heat and get a nice sear on it like we would a steak um, that really locks the juices in. Uh, typically we see mushrooms like this that don't have a lot of coloring on them and they get really slimy, making that texture that a lot of people decide that they, they don't enjoy. Um, I, I personally don't prefer mushrooms that are slimy, but if you get that nice sear on them, that beautiful golden brown, uh, you're able to get a nice crunch to it. Um, and it holds in all of that flavor, that umami and nutty that we're going to get from the shiitake mushroom. Uh, so when you are sauteing it, when you make this recipe later, um, I recommend doing it like this, high heat and sauteing it um, to that golden brown coloring on either side before you use it. Uh, next, uh, the reason that um, I chose this dish is because snow peas are in season. So right now we have asparagus, rhubarb, snow peas, and squash blossoms. Um, and when an item is in season, it is, um, it's going to be at its prime. It's going to be when it's juiciest, most flavorful. Um, so we chose to make uh, snow peas, which is common in Vietnamese vegetable pancakes. And one thing I wanted to talk about with these, these snow peas is you do have to trim it. Um, so I've already cut the edges off. Um, you'll see a little bit of a tip on your typical snow peas, um, but there is a, um, a line that runs down the spine right here. Um, and what I want to do is show you. So if you pinch it and you pull up, you're gonna get this fiber strand out of the top of it, which is gonna be really chewy, almost like celery. So every time we use snow peas, uh, we wanna make sure that we take this part off. Um, so I do that with all the snow peas, and then I will cut them up into bite-sized pieces as you'll see in our pancake later. Um, so fun fact about snow peas there, and these have a very sweet taste. Um, typical pea, they can be eaten raw or sauteed. I prefer them sauteed, because it brings out a little bit more of that sugar content. Um, so that's snow peas. And then the last thing that we're gonna look at while we're here is the batter. Um, so this isn't your typical pancake batter um, in the sense that it's going to be really thin. Uh, we don't add any baking powder or baking soda to it. It's just rice flour, eggs, water, and salt. Um, so it's almost going to come out like a crepe. Um, and then now we don't want any lumps in it like we do with normal pancake batter because we're not looking for a rise on it. Um, so it should be nice and thin, um, almost a little bit runny. Um, so let's go ahead and get cooking. All right, now we're gonna move away uh, from the cutting board and I'm going to start by heating up my pan on high heat. And I'm going to put um, a couple of teaspoons of olive oil here. One thing with this pan that I'm using is a non-stick pan. If we use a, um, a Risa pan uh, that is not non-stick, it's probably gonna to stick to the bottom. And one cool thing about these pancakes is that we don't flip them to cook both sides because it's so thin, it cooks all the way through from one side of heat. Um, so if we have a nonstick pan, it's less likely to stick to the bottom, uh, which is really, really important. Um, otherwise, uh, when you go to put it on the plate, if all of your insides are going to fall out onto the plate and it's not going to look this pretty. So that being said, I know that the oil is ready when it starts swirling around the pan easily, uh, meaning it moves like water, like warm water. Um, so I'm going to let this oil get ready. Then I'm going to take a ladle of batter. Um, just about two ounces uh, for this size pancake. All right, my, 
My pan is good. Everything is hot. My oil is moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and put the batter in. And then I'm going to make sure that it swirls all the way around. Because again, we're not looking for a big fluffy pancake on this. We want a nice thin pancake that's going to fold and turn beautifully. Okay, so once I have it over the whole bottom of the pan, I'm going to return it back to heat. At this point, I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. Since I'm only cooking it from one side, I don't want it to burn on that side while it's trying to cook all the way through. And then I'm going to add some of the uh, vegetables. Here we have the snow peas and the sauteed mushrooms. When I do this, I'm only going to put it on half of the pancake because I'm going to fold the pancake over. Beautiful. I want to make sure that I got the right amount of mushrooms and snow peas in there. So at this point, what I'm going to do to heat the vegetables up is I'm going to put a lid on it. Uh, so I'm going to put a lid onto the top of the pan for about a minute on medium heat. So the vegetables start to get warm and the pancake starts to cook. Again, I don't want high heat because it's going to burn the bottom and make it black um, and really burnt and bitter. Um, but I don't want low heat either because that will take a long time. After about the minute with the uh, pan... Uh, with a lid on it, um, that's when I'm start going to start adjusting the heat back and forth um, so that I know, um, is it cooked, is it not? I can start picking it up and looking under it uh, before we get to the plating on it. Uh, the ingredients in our uh, Vietnamese vegetable pancake are going to be snow peas, mushrooms, bean sprouts, and green onions, which is a great, bright, fresh, summery flavor profile. It's going to be slightly acidic, slightly sweet, slightly meaty from the mushrooms, and it has a, um, a beautiful dipping sauce. Um, it's going to be um, mostly soy sauce, but it has a little bit of peanuts and some spice from the chilies. Okay, so right now I'm just going to do slight swirls to make sure that it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. Once I can swirl the whole thing around, that's how I know that it's ready to remove the lid. And it looks like we're about there. So I can remove the lid. As you can see right here, I can touch it and it looks like it's slightly cooked, um, but it is still a little bit runny. So now I know it's time to turn the heat down because again, I don't want to burn that underside. And then I'm going to add some bean sprouts and some green onions, okay? Same thing with this. I'm going to put it on one half with the rest of the vegetables. Beautiful. And at this point, I'm going to pick up one side of it and look at the coloring on it to make sure that I'm not burning it if I need to adjust the heat. Good. So the pancake right now is starting to get, is starting to get solid. And that, that side that doesn't have any heat on it is starting to cook all the way through once again because it's so thin. Um, at this point, uh, I'm waiting for my vegetables to warm up. And then I'm just trying to get a nice golden brown coloring on it. So I'm going to turn the heat up high. Um, if it were really raw, I would leave the heat low until it started to get more set. Um, but at this point, we can do, I can get some nice coloring on it. So I, I just want to finish with the uh, coloring before I fold it over onto the plate. Um, that being said, we talked about the sauce a little bit, which is um, in the recipe, this sauce is, um, it's your soy sauce, lime juice, peanuts, and chilies. And you just mix it by hand. Super simple, uh, very savory, and that saltiness really brings the dish together. All right. Almost have some coloring on it. Um, one thing we want to do uh, uh, in the recipe is we want to make sure that we saute our mushrooms ahead of time. That is because it won't cook in the pancake. As you can see, this is only going to be a couple minutes, and I really just want to get it warm. I want to heat up the bean sprouts, green onions, uh, mushrooms and snow peas. All of these things can be eaten raw, uh, but we really want a warm dish. We don't want cold food in a warm pancake. Otherwise, the whole thing cools down and we're, uh, we're eating a cold meal. All right, almost there. So I have a light golden brown starting. Um, once I once I see that light golden brown, I know I have about 30 seconds on high heat before I'm going to move it over to our plate. Uh, once I do that, then we have our breakfast.
Beautiful. All right. So now I have that beautiful golden brown. I have my veggies, as you can see in here. I can feel this, so I know that it's cooked all the way through. We're going to come back over to the cutting board, and we're going to plate it. Um, and then we're going to put the uh, sauce on the side and finish with the garnish. So when I slide this out, I'm going to do it kind of like I do eggs. In the sense of I'm going to get about half of it down. And I'm going to get really close to lifting straight up with the pan, not trying to fold it over. Um, and then I'm going to take either a spatula or my hand. And I'm going to bring it back over and push it down so we have this stuffed pancake. All right. And from here on the board, you can see that we have that little bit of coloring that we're looking for. And I'm going to finish the plate. So I have the sauce already made. Um, and this is that, this is that uh, peanut soy sauce, lime juice, uh, red chili mixture already on the side. I'm going to choose to put it on the side. Um, because I don't know how much people want. Uh, sauces are hard. Some people like a lot, some people like a little. Um, so I like to leave it as an option up to the person eating. And then the last thing is we want to make this pretty. So I have some um, thinly sliced green onions over here. I'm going to put a little nest on top uh, to give it a little bit of height and make a pop of green. And then I can take a little bit of it and put it into the white space as well so that it doesn't look like we have a bunch of white, we have a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown. I want that color to really come through until, so you can see that I filled in the white space here. And then we have a beautiful finished Vietnamese vegetable pancake.